Hello friends, we are still not employed by a FANG company, so let's know lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do valid parentheses lead code problem and this problem has been asked by some of the companies where I want to work at. There are companies like Amazon, LinkedIn, Facebook, Microsoft, Bloomberg, Spotify, Adobe, Google, Apple, Uber, TikTok, Goldman Sachs, Twitter, Netflix, Twitch, Tesla, ByteDance, Lyft and Airbnb have all asked this question. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code easy problem and also one of the most liked problems on lead code. Uh, and that is because this problem actually solves one of the very real life application where a compiler has to check that whether the code has valid parentheses or not. And so that's why a lot of companies like to ask this problem as an interview question. Uh, if we understand the problem, basically we are given a string S that contains just these three types of parentheses, opening parentheses and closing parentheses. And we need to determine that if the given input is uh, actually a valid input or not. We are also given the definition that what counts as a valid input that if the opening brackets are closed by the same type of closing brackets and also we are told that the opening brackets must be closed in the correct order. So let's try to understand this with some examples over here. I have drawn a bunch of different uh, potential uh, examples and we will see that if they are valid or not. So first of all, if we see this example, we know that okay, we have two closing, uh, two opening brackets and we have two closing brackets. We can consider this as a valid string. So I'm just noting it, it as V. Now again, in this case, we have two different types of opening brackets and we have two different times, uh, types of closing brackets. So this is also a valid string. Now in this case, uh, this is an opening bracket, this is an opening bracket, we have corresponding closing brackets. Again we have opening and closing brackets and again we have opening and closing brackets. So everything is in order and the same kind of brackets are opened and correct in proper uh, shape and size. So we can consider this uh, also as a valid format. Now if we can come to this example, this is an opening bracket, this is also an opening bracket but we only have a closing bracket for this original opening bracket. So we can consider this as invalid option. So we get an idea why it is invalid. In this case we have three opening brackets and only one closing bracket. So again this is an invalid uh, string. And in this case, actually, if we see the number of opening brackets and number of closing brackets, they are actually same. So we have one opening bracket and one closing bracket, again, one opening bracket and one type of closing bracket. But this is still invalid. Why it is invalid? Because this bracket, this curly bracket is actually opened before this particular round bracket. So that's why it has to be closed before this round bracket closes. And in this case, this round bracket actually closes first before this curly bracket is being closed. So this is very important property that we will have to keep track of. And that is why we are told that we need to keep track the, of the order in which they are opened and closed. And then only we can determine that whether they are valid or not. So this is also an invalid uh, formula. So let's see that what would be the potential solution. So let's start from the very simple example and see that what would be the intuition behind building a solution. Suppose we are given an example that looks like this, where we are given all of the brackets that are of the same kind and we are given some opening brackets and some closing brackets. Well, we can clearly see that this is a valid approach and how we can determine is that we can actually create a counter. And what this counter does is that any at any given moment we identify an opening bracket, we are actually going to increase the value in this counter. And at any given moment, if we encounter a closing bracket, we are actually going to decrease the value in this counter. And in, at the end, we have to check that whether the value inside this counter, if that is equal to zero, which means we can determine that the same number of opening bracket and closing brackets are present. And then we can say that the string is actually valid. If that is not the case, we can say it is invalid. So if we see that in action, first of all, we have three opening brackets. So we will increment the value of this counter three times and if we do that we will get the counter value to be at three again now we identify a closing bracket so now this value from three becomes two again we identify two more closing brackets so again it go it gets decreased two more times and then we get the final counter value to be zero and because the, we get this value as zero we can say that okay this string is actually valid string and the same number of opening and closing brackets are happening so this is one way to identify a solution. But in this case, the complexity is actually very simple. Why? Because we are only using one kind of uh, opening and closing brackets. In our original problem we, problem, we are actually told that there are three different kinds of opening and closing brackets and we will have to keep tra track of them. Also, we need to keep track that in what order they were opened and closed and that order also has to be maintained. So it is not just as simple as keeping track of counter that we create three different counters for all single type one of them and then we see that at the end whether this value is zero or not we also have to keep track of that what is the order they were opened in and they were closed in 
So for the optimal solution, we know we need to take care of two things. First thing is we need to check that whether the opening and closing number of brackets are same for each three different types of parentheses or not. Second thing we have to take care is that what is the order in which they are opened and closed. So first let's tackle the first problem. We know that for every single opening bracket there has to be a closing bracket and they are always in pair. So now to quickly look them up, we are actually going to use a hash map. Now inside our hash map, we are actually going to have all of these closing brackets as the keys and their opening brackets as corresponding values. So we are going to have three entries. Now we have to take care of their order and number of occurrences. So the idea is we are actually going to use another data structure called stack and the stack is actually going to be very helpful to us. So let's try to understand this with an example that how we are going to use a stack over here. Suppose we are given an input that looks like this. Okay, so I'm going to show you two examples um, on how we are going to solve this problem. So first let's take this example. And the idea is that at any given moment we identify an open bracket, we are going to add that value inside our stack. And at any moment we are go and going to encounter a closing bracket, we are going to pop a value on from the stack. And then we are going to see that the whatever the value we popped out if that is the same value that is for any given uh, hash map value we have inside the string for this that particular closing bracket so let's see that in the action first of all we identify these three opening brackets so we are going to add all of the entries inside our stack so first we will add a curly bracket then we will add uh, these two brackets once we are done with this one now we have a closing bracket our hand the moment we identify a closing bracket remember we will have to pop the value out of our uh, stack so we are going to pop the value out of the stack and the value we have popped out is actually this one now for this closing bracket we are going to see that what is the value of that bracket inside our hash map and the value of that bracket is also like this and we are going to compare these two elements that whatever we took out from the stack and whatever we got from this hash map and both are same so because both are same we can say that okay we are good so far and now so far we have actually uh, taken care of these four elements and now we are on this element again this is also a closing bracket so because this is also a closing bracket we will have to pop a value out and we are going if we pop a value out we will get a value that looks like this where we that we are uh, arrived from our stack and now we are going to check that for this particular bracket that we were iterating over what is the corresponding value inside the hash map so the key is this one and the corresponding value is this one so the value we found from our hash map is also this one and they both are same so because they both are same we can say that okay we are good up until this point now we are iterating over this curly bracket so we again pop and um, also i have forgot to uh, delete this value now again we pop out a value from our stack so now we don't have this value over here and we have a bracket that looks like this again for this closing bracket the value inside our hash map is also an opening curly bracket and both are same so we are good up until this point now we are only up to last two characters so this is also an opening bracket the moment we identify opening bracket we will add an entry to our stack and now this is a closing bracket so again we will pop this entry out after popping this entry out so this is the value we popped out from the stack and then we will compare from our hash map so the value is this one and both are same so we are now we are at the end of our string and because we are at the end of our string we are going to check that whether inside the stack we have entry any entry or not we don't have any entry so we can return true in this case and we can say that the given string is actually valid and this would be the answer now uh, let's take one more example where the string is not valid and see that what we are going to encounter in this case suppose we are given a string that looks like this so in this case we have two opening brackets and one closing bracket so first of all we identify that this is the opening bracket uh, we are going to add an entry over here again we had encounter an opening bracket we are going to add an entry over here now we encounter a closing bracket the moment we encounter a closing bracket we are actually going to pop out the value from our stack and the value we popped out is actually a curly opening bracket now for this closing bracket uh, we actually have a corresponding value inside our hash map that looks like this one now these two are actually not same so the moment we identify that these two are not same we can immediately return that this string is actually invalid and the parentheses are not in correct order so we, we are done with this one time complexity is actually going to be big o of n where the n is not the number of entries present inside the string and even in terms of space complexity because we are using a stack and hash map but we don't care about hash map because it has finite number of uh, entries but for the stack the values will be dependent on big o of n as well on the number of in, uh, entries present inside the string now let's move on to coding So first of all we are going to initialize our hash map and inside the hash map we are going to store the values for three different brackets that we are given.
okay we are done with this one now we are going to initialize our stack and we are going to name it as stack as well and now we are going to run a for loop across the given string so first of all we are going to initialize the character c and that is to keep track of whatever the uh, character we are looking over inside the given string now we are going to check that if the current bracket is opening bracket or closing bracket which means that if the key value is present inside this mapping bracket then we can define that it is a closing bracket if not then we can define it as an opening bracket so if the value is not present inside this mapped bracket key which means that we will have to uh, push the current value inside the stack if not which means that the value is actually closing bracket and then first of all we are going to pop the value out of our uh, stack and then we are going to compare it with whatever the value pair inside the map bracket we have and if the stack is empty we can return false immediately so in the else condition we check that if the stack is empty we can return false immediately if not we are going to uh, pop out of the pop out a value from the stack and we are going to name it as top element and now we are going to check that whether that is the same value that is present for the map bracket value key and if the values are not same we can return false immediately as well and if that is not the case eventually if we get out of the loop then we will have to check that whether the given stack is empty or not if the stack is empty we can return true or else we can return false let's try to run this code okay seems like our code is working as expected let's submit the code and our solution is actually pretty fast compared to a lot of other solutions uh, so i would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you